Hey guys, welcome back. So you probably saw our interview with uh, my good friend Alina. If you haven't, check out the link that we're gonna put up for you. It was an amazing interview and she just had such cool uh, thoughts and ideas and I just love the stuff she talked about. So please check it out if you haven't. So today we've got a really cool other interview Jesse, who did you get to interview? So today our interview is with none other but our good friend and um, guy that we've had a lot to do with in church and ministry. Um, but he's just an awesome guy who's had a great, great career and also just has a heart for young people. His name is Lance. And um, I got the opportunity to ask him some really deep questions, but some good questions. So without further ado, here is my interview with Lance. All right, welcome everybody. Well, this is my good friend Lance. Welcome, Lance. Thank you, Jesse. Um, so, as we talked about a little bit before, Lance has been doing ministry in church for a while um, and got quite a, uh, a career behind him. <laughs> and um, so, before we get into sort of an interview, would you like to just tell everybody a little bit about yourself very briefly? Um, yeah. Oh, wait. Well, hello everyone. My name is Lance, as Jesse's introduced me. Um, so yeah, been in youth ministry for 20 years, and that means, uh, well, uh, you may not know what that means, or you definitely know what that means, but uh, different sort of aspects of youth ministry, looking after young people in church context. So from a local church level to a citywide level to a conference level, um, which means looking after all the churches in a, a region. And so that's my role at the moment, is looking after all of the churches in the North Island of New Zealand. Here, um, so mm, yeah. fantastic. So 20, 20 plus years. It's been twenty years. Yeah. Exactly twenty years. Um, yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, or well, well, maybe slightly over. So it's been yeah, a few different little bits and pieces, but yeah. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's, it's scary. Yeah. You yeah. Go, oh, you look back. You're like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So what's changed in the past twenty years for you, and for the the context that you are, are in? The, the biggest change has been the color of my yeah, so um, youth ministry hasn't kept me young on the outside, but has on the inside. Amen. But, Amen. Um, I, I don't think that's where you're going with the question, so I'm um, sorry, Jesse. Not, not quite, but it's still No, right, yeah. Uh, some of the, uh, there's been lots of changes I've seen uh, over 20 years. Um, I think the current generation of young people, what stands out for me is just way more stress and expectations and pressure than ever before. Um, and a lot of that comes down to just options. Um, never has a generation known the options of knowledge and opportunity. But the problem is that's quite paralyzing. And so I noticed, um, yeah, the current generation like um, often don't want to get back um, not because they're anti-baptism, but just that's a massive commitment. It's like, well, I don't know if I want to lock myself in because everywhere else you don't lock yourself in because you need options and you need to, you know, upgrade. And um, mm. so I see that. Um, but just the pressures, you know, um, I've never seen a generation carry so much expectation and pressure. Wow. Um, and that, yeah, that has a <laughs> technology, an obvious one. Um, connection, it's funny, it's the most connected generation I've worked with, and yet in some ways the most disconnected generation. So, um, and that plays out in terms of just um, the dynamics. I see um, the old clicks have broken down quite a bit because um, online you can be friends with a lot of randoms you wouldn't normally, and that spills over. I'm starting to see that spill over in real life where people will, um, yeah, I'm like, man, that group doesn't go together, but they do, they make it work. Whereas back in the past, it was like that, they never go. Whereas now I'm like, there's all this movement, which is really neat, seeing that kind of connection, and yet at the same time, um, a disconnect. It's, yeah, which is really that's, yeah, that, that is fascinating. And I guess, you know, with the, the generational changes, new new issues, new stresses, new positives, what do you see as being um, issues and stresses today in this current generation, which going a little bit further into the future may no longer be issues that people deal with as young adults? So what I guess one of the big shifts moving into this generation has been um, previously um, to be to be church or to be a Christian or to be an Adventist, um, there was quite a tight definition for that. Um, and so you either were in that box or you're outside of the box. And if you're outside the box, and that means well, you're not at church, basically. Um, and I've seen the change where suddenly that box, um, the, the old what we call standards, you know, so like if you're a Christian or an Adventist, it meant that um, moved. 
um, and I find that more young people actually explore all the different, you know, going, going through normal life stuff, exploring who they are and what they're really about. Um, they're starting to do that in a church context. Yeah. Um, so that, that's something of change, you know, so you, yeah, you will get some previously behaviours that you would never have seen in church because it's like, no, 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 you've got to leave church to do that. Yeah. Now you actually see that explored in church. So wow. uh, that's challenging, but at the same time yeah. good that church can be broad enough that somebody can grow <laughs> through all the stages of life and their questions with God or their journey with God. They can never do that in a church context. Mm. Um, and I, I see that probably even, yeah, I don't know. The next shift will either, I think, we'll find tools to do that better because we still, you know, struggle to, you know, people going through some pretty big stuff in church, we still struggle to speak to that. Yeah. And so I don't know if we'll learn to do that better or if we might tighten up again and go, no, we're going to draw lines. Um, and I'm scared if that happens. I like, yeah, you know, church should have the broadest arms yeah. um, to hold everyone, you know. Wow. Um, I can see how that could be quite confronting for people who have held on to certain standards of behaviour for so long, and yet there is going to be a natural push and pull, isn't there? Yeah. 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 Um, I guess which leads us to kind of probably my most exciting thought around about now, which is what is the church going to look like in 10 to 20 years? There's going to be a whole generation that's passed away, literally, yeah. and there's going to be a whole new set of leaders who are who are at the forefront of thought, leadership, um, yep. you know, pushing the church forward. What do you envision as the church looking like in 10 to 20 years? Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Every, I, look, honor all generation. Every generation is given the, uh, the invitation by God to carry church. And they do that in the way that he's, you know, um, expressed through that generation. And the, the generation coming, I'm really excited because, again, you've got that, that ability to connect, that mm. desire to connect, and that's going to come through. So church will be very relational, which I think is a, a massive strength of, of that generation. Um, church will be, again, a push for relevance, and relevance is defined by impacting community, actually impacting need. Mm. Like if church doesn't actually get outside the four walls and meet the community need, then, um, you know, I think the next generation leaders are going to call the bluff and go mm. God needs us to make it to shine to make mm. a difference and I think we're going to see that and again a very good strength of the generation and that ability to actually um, connect with people that are outside of the box mm. and I think church is going to actually become broader which is I think a yeah. very exciting shift as well and they're the three things that I think um, I see in this generation that as they become leaders and so um, and yeah and I think there are some um, the big conversations will be around um, just, yeah, you know, uh, society has um, moved to, you know, um, looking at, um, I guess, rights for a lot of different um, groups yeah. in, in terms of identity. And I think, um, yeah, next generation of leaders will also be the ones who are bold enough to actually explore what that looks like in church. Because currently, I think, yeah, my generation, we're still scared about how to deal with that. And I think the next generation, you guys will, you'll sort it, you'll do it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Scary. Exciting. Yep. Oh man, that's so cool. That's so cool. Well, hey, that uh, that brings us to the end of our interview. Thank you very much, Lance, for your words of wisdom. Um, and comment down below on um, what you heard. Uh, is there anything that you agreed with, disagreed with? Um, what do you think about the future of church? Maybe you you don't even like church. Um, how do you see the role of church in society moving forward? Um, so yeah, have a comment down below, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody.